So, um, hello and welcome to lesson 7 of our study of mathematical biology. So, in lesson 7, we are going to find the qualitative solution of the SIR model with vital dynamics and force of infection. So, note that in our sixth lesson, we talked about the SIR model with vital dynamics and force of infection. We derived the various equations ran through the justification for constant population and we also derive the basic reproductive number R0. So in this lesson, we'll be finding the solution to our uh, equation qualitatively. Right? So know that in mathematics, we have three types of solution. We have analytical solution, which involves the use of lay down formulas. We have qualitative solution, which involves the use of um fixed points and discussing stabilities and we have quantitative solution or numerical solution which involves the use of numerical um methods right for finding solutions iteratively so we will be doing a qualitative solution right so we find a qualitative solution of the SRR model with vital dynamics so that means by the end of this video, you will find fixed points and you will also find eigenvalues and we will discuss the stability of those things, okay? Alright. So recall from lesson 6 that we had these three equations. So equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. Okay, so... In... Solving it qualitatively, the first thing we have to know is to find for fixed points, or what we call stationary points or equilibrium points. So, to find a fixed point, what we do is that we put the first order derivatives to zero. So, we put the s dt to zero, the i dt to zero, and the r dt to zero. So, from equation two, putting the i dt to zero. We are going to end up with this. You can see i is a common factor, so that means we can factorize that out. And we have this. And what this means is that it's either i is 0 or beta s minus gamma minus mu is what? 0. So from this, i is equal to 0. We can send these guys to the right hand side for us to have this. And dividing through by beta will give us this. So i is 0 or s is gamma plus mu over beta all right so that means we can take i equals zero to find the corresponding values for s and r then after that we'll take s equals gamma plus mu over beta to find the corresponding values for i and r so that means you're going to have two fixed points okay all right so now we put i equals zero into equation one and equation three to find the corresponding values for s and r so when you put it inside equation one we will have zero will be equal to mu minus beta s i minus mu s so this is putting the s dt to zero in equation one right so now making the substitution i zero so we have this here then the whole of this part goes to zero and we have zero will be equal to mu minus mu s since mu is common, we factorize that one out and we have this. So what this means is that mu is 0 or 1 minus s is 0. So hence, mu is 0 or s is equal to 1. So that means when i is 0, the corresponding value for s is 1. Right? So now we put i equals 0 into equation 3 to find the corresponding value for r. So when we put the r dt to 0 in equation 3, we have this. Putting i equals 0 inside gives us this. So that means this part goes away. And that gives us this. And when you find for r, we have r to be 0. Okay. So that means that r is 0. So our first fixed point is then s star i star r star equals 1, 0, 0. Uh, s was 1, i was 0, r was 0. Okay. So now we have to find for our second fixed point. 
right so you find our second phase point using the fact that s is equal to mu plus gamma over beta so from here you remember okay so we put this in equation one to find i so this is equation one when we put the derivative to zero so making replacement now wherever you find s we are supposed to put mu plus gamma over beta there that gives us this all right then we can do simplification so we bring this to the left hand side now we have positive here and the rest are the same so this cancels this and that gives us this equation here then since we are finding for i we divide through by mu plus gamma and that gives us this and when we simplify this further it gives us beta mu minus mu or multiply mu plus gamma over beta or multiply mu plus what gamma so this is the value for i okay then we put i equals beta mu minus mu multiplying mu plus gamma all over beta mu plus gamma into equation 3 to find r so this is equation 3 when the r the t is 0 that's why we have 0 here right so putting i inside gives us this we are after r right so that means we make this the subject and that gives us this and to find r we divide you by mu and that gives us this so that means there is a value for r okay so we have s i r so that means we have the second fixed point and our second fixed point or equilibrium point is given by this so we have two fixed points in this fixed point we have special names for them right so the fixed point the first fixed point is called the disease free fixed point and it's called disease free because if you could recall the first fixed point was this right so you can see the i component is zero and since the i component is zero you see it is disease free fixed point and the second phase point is what we call the endemic phase point the endemic you know there is it where this part i is non zero okay so after finding for the fixed point what we do is that we discuss the stability of the fixed points so to discuss the stability of the fixed point we need to get our jacobian matrix and um, what you're going to do is that you know s plus i plus r equals one so that means when we know two of these three things we can always find for the other one so in constructing our jacobian matrix we are going to exclude this okay and then we will use the first two and it is because we want to make our jacobian very simple okay so we let the whole of this equals f of si and the whole of this equals f of g, S, g of si sorry so the jacobian matrix is given by what we can see here so that means we have to find our partial derivatives of our functions g and f with respect to s and i so find the partial derivatives are going to give us this okay so you can confirm that okay so after getting the partial derivatives we substitute them into our jacobian matrix and then we have that so after getting this the next thing for us to do is to take the first fixed point then we put it inside our jacobian matrix we go through some processes after that we take the second phase point and we go through the same process so taking the first phase point we we'll get s star i star will be equal to one zero note that the first phase point was originally this but since we excluded the r from our jacobian matrix that's why we just have this okay so then wherever we find s we put one there wherever we find i we put zero there so that gives us this so that means this part goes to zero so we just have minus mu here we have zero here we have minus beta we have this thing here all right so after getting our jacobian matrix and evaluating it at 
the first six points, we find eigenvalues. And the formula for computing the eigenvalue is given by this. So we have this. Right, we subtract lambda from each diagonal element. Then we find for the determinant. So it will be this times this minus this times this. But you know this will go to zero because of the zero here. So that means we only have this thing here. And from here, we will have minus mu minus lambda equals zero or whatever we have here equals zero. So that means we have lambda one will be equal to minus mu and lambda two will be equal to beta minus or into brackets gamma plus mu. So these are again values and we have to discuss the stability based on that. Okay. So if all our again values are negative, then the system will be stable asymptotically stable or stable then if the eigen values the signs alternate then we have unstable okay so you see that um uh, beta mu and gamma they are all parameters okay and they are all greater than zero they are on um positive okay so it means our lambda one will always be negative. But for our lambda two, there is a condition attached to it. You know, our lambda two will be positive if this is greater than this. Right? And it will be negative if this is greater than this. Right? So that's the conclusion we make here that our lambda one will always be negative. And for our lambda two to be negative, that means this should be greater than this and for it to be positive this should be less than this all right so hence we make this conclusion that for the first six points a star i star equals one zero it is stable if gamma plus mu is greater than beta and it is unstable if gamma plus mu is less than beta all right so thank you very much let's go to the second fixed point so the second phase point today is that you know we exclude the arrow because we didn't include that in our Jacobian matrix. So that means wherever you find i, we put this there. Wherever you find s, we put this there. So doing that gives us this. All right. So here this cancels this. This cancels this. This cancels this. This cancels this. So we end up with this 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 and that okay we are not this if you do those constellations and you know when we evaluate what we have here we are going to get minus beta mu over mu plus gamma because this will cancel this then you have plus mu minus mu which will give us zero so we only have this component this to this will cancel this and we have this then this we have this and this gives us zero okay so we have this so after getting is the next thing is to find for our eigen values so we use this formula then we have to subtract lambda from each diagonal element okay so you're doing that gives us this then we find the determinant of it which is equal to zero so it will be this time this minus this time this All right so that gives us what we have here, all right? And you want to put this in this form, a s squared plus b x plus c equals zero, so that we can use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation and find for our eigen values. So doing that arrangement, you know, when we multiply, we are going to get this, and further simplification gives us this. You can see this is of the form e s squared plus b x plus c equals zero so we then use the quadratic formula to find our eigen values and the quadratic formula is given by this okay so making comparison to what we have here that means our a which is the coefficient of lambda squared is one then our b which is the coefficient of lambda is this and our c the constant is that 
Okay. So then we have to make substitution into the quadratic formula to find for lambda 1, lambda 2. So when we do that, then this is going to be it, like making substitution into the quadratic formula. All right. So we can then find for lambda 1 and lambda 2 by one of them being positive, one of them being negative because of this thing here. So that means we can write our lambda 1 to be the positive 1 and our lambda 2 to be the what? Negative 1. But after writing this, the next thing is for us to do analysis. Okay. When will our system be what? Stable. So our system, is, our system will be stable if both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are less than what? 0. If any other thing apart from that will make the system unstable. Okay. All right. So, you know, when we take lambda 1, for instance, lambda 1 will only be negative. Okay. Lambda 1 will only be negative. You know, for lambda 2, lambda 2 will always be negative. Lambda 2 will always be negative because of the negative here and the negative here. Because we know whatever is here has to be non-negative. Right? So... That means, whatever we get here, when you find the minus, minus of it, it will always give us something which will be less than zero. So that means lambda 2 will always be negative. So the next thing is for us to find a condition which is going to make lambda 1 also negative. Okay. So for lambda 1 to be negative, it means that when we evaluate this thing here, whatever we get here should be less than beta mu over mu plus gamma okay so i have some short notes here that let phi be this and let alpha be this so for there to be stability right that means for lambda one to be negative we are saying that phi should be greater than alpha should be greater than phi that means phi should be less than what alpha and this phi to you know this phi should be greater than zero because when phi is less than zero you are going to have complex roots okay we're not interested in that here so this phi should also be greater than zero so then we have there is stability when zero is less than phi is less than alpha so this is a condition for stability. Okay. All right. So, um, thank you very much for um, following through lesson seven. I'm Budo Kanrino, a final year student of mathematics at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like the video and please subscribe to the channel for more content. So, in our next lesson, that's lesson eight. We will talk about a different model. So we will move from the SIR model and we will move to SEIR model with vital dynamics and force of infection. Right? So thank you very much and see you in the next video.